As far as I can tell, this is right now the cheapest 360 AIO in the world. And you know what? It kicks ass. Be Quiet is proud to introduce their all new light mount and dark mount ultra silent mechanical keyboards. Optimized for an ultra quiet typing experience with factory lubricated silent linear or tactile switches and three separate layers of sound damping. Light mount features a full size keyboard with an aluminum media wheel and five macro keys for streamlined access, while dark mount provides a more modular keyboard with hot swappable numpad and media dock. Both feature sleek aesthetics, hot swappable switches, ARGB lighting, and a magnetic palm rest and are the perfect choice for those who demand comfort, customization, and silence. For more details, visit the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so I have a confession to make. This is the Thermalrite Frozen Natte, Frozen Natte 360. Yeah, I didn't make the name, okay? Phil's looking at me like, what the hell? Look, right there. Frozen Note 360 Black ARGB. The confession is I bought this in July of 2024. It has been on the shelf for more than a year wrapped in plastic. Now, it's kind of better that I waited, I think, because I paid $65 for it in July of 2024, and today it's $55. In a world, in a world where everything's being tariffed into oblivion, Thermalrite has found a way to make it cheaper. That just makes everyone else look really bad, right? <laughs> anyway, um, but when it comes to cheap AIOs, right, we talked about the, the Montec one with their LCD screen, or well, not really an LCD screen, but just a display, which I don't think the display's all that great. We talked about it being a, a fairly inexpensive model for having a screen. Well, you guys were like, bro, what crack are you smoking? Because it's been a while since I've actually shopped. So let's just talk about some Amazon pricing here real quick. And I'll put links to this in the description as well as some of these other AIOs. Because here's the thing, the PC cooler, yeah, that's the name of the cooler, PC cooler. <laughs> CPU liquid uh, freezer 360 AIO liquid cooling high performance pump uh, is 80 bucks. And that one has a screen on it with an anime chick. <laughs> so that one has a screen. Uh, that's $79. So that already is, is, makes the, the Montec look kind of not great. This is $55.39 with free overnight worth where we live. So keep that in mind. No shipping costs on that. There's also the... Uh, for $69, the ID Cooling DX360 Max, that doesn't have a screen on it, but it has kind of like a, a neat, sort of like a ARGB array, if you will. Looks kind of uh, be quiet-y, if you ask me. <laughs> but it's like half the price. So that was 79 bucks for that guy, or excuse me, 69 bucks for that guy. I also just bought this, the Thermalrite Stream Vision 360 Black AIO Liquid Cooler. Uh, with 3.5 inch LCD screen on it. This is $118 for this guy. But, uh, here, I'll, I'll show you guys. $118, and it looks very Ryujin-like to me. It also has a downfire fan. This is also not sponsored. I know it might sound like it, but that's the thing. I bought this to do like the super cheap AIO kind of comparison last year, because everyone was like kind of losing their mind over how good the Thermalrite AIO has been. And since then, we've tested other Thermalrite things that have been absol absolutely phenomenal in terms of how good they are. So, uh, spoiler alert, I've already run my tests on this. And we'll talk about the charts in a sec. I just want to show you what it comes with. Not everything is rainbows and kittens as far as I'm concerned, but my gripes about it are extremely minimal and quite honestly, might even be like grasping at straws because it's like you have to find, there's no perfect product. You have to find something to gripe about. And for me, it's that. But to be fair, Be Quiet is the same way. <laughs> so, because technically it has a pigtail for each fan and ARGB, but because the pigtails are at the end, you can't really tidy this up that great. So once you bundle it all up and you zip tie it all together, because the links are all different, this is what you're left with at the end. So this is one of my biggest gripes right here. Now you might notice this is a different design in the sense that it's not the typical like Asetek. Now the Asetek patent has expired, so it's gonna definitely be a kind of a free for all now when it comes to the way people are designing their pumps and such. But even though it's nice and tall, this is not the pump, this is the pump. This is the pump that's in line. Now I'm curious about, this is where I need you guys to kind of comment down below if you bought this cooler, because I have heard these pumps tend to fail more often than even the pumps that are built into the cold plate. But the nice thing about the pump being in line like this is you have better options to make sure that your pump is always going to be in the uh, ideal position. So if you're mounting it on the back wall of like a dual chamber, right, it's gonna be at the top no matter what, which is what you kind of don't want. 
So as long as it's not like, I mean, it'd be difficult to do it, but as long as it's not like that, I think you'd be okay, right? Obviously, if it's horizontal, that's perfectly great, but no different than the other designs. You don't want it underneath. You don't want the rad underneath the pump. Like you want the pump as low as possible. But this pump runs at 5,500 RPM, where most of the pumps built into the top of the cold plate run at about 3,500 RPM. But it doesn't make any noise. That it's really, really quiet. So in our test today, it was running at full speed, but our fans were also uh, running at 10 volts to put it at 1800 RPM. These are 2000 RPM fans. Um, I saw some comments last time saying, why would you do that? That's really loud at 1800. Well, yeah, we're testing the cooling capability under a high load. So obviously we can't run the fans silent mode and then knock it points if it gets really warm. You ideally would have your fans ramp up to combat the amount of additional thermal capacity that's being dumped or the thermal uh, load that's being dumped into the system. So you need to ramp up your fans. But we have to find a way to make sure that we're keeping the test as A to B to C comparison as possible. And for us, that's normalizing at 1800 RPMs on the fan. So yeah, the fan design comes into play as well. But if you look at them, I was thinking one of the ways that they were probably gonna keep this unit as cheap as possible is put some of the cheapest possible fans in there. But it doesn't really feel that way. I mean, they're fluid dynamic bearing. They're a little bit, like there's a little bit of play. Not a lot, but it, they weren't rattling or making noise when I was um, doing my test. The blades are nice and thick. They don't feel thin. Like if you accidentally touch one with your finger, that's gonna snap a blade off, which is what a lot of cheap fans feel like. The cage is fairly thick, like for the fan, fan um, frame. And it's ARGB. So how they've packaged all this for $55 and can still make any money is just a shock to me. Anyway, so we have all those pigtails I talked about. We have a really long ARGB wire coming off of the AIO or the cold plate where the technically just that's the block, right? And it's a pigtail as well. So that, cause this has an infinity mirror effect on there, but I'll be honest, I kind of really didn't give a crap about the ARGB aspect or the infinity mirror aspect because of the fact that we care about cooling at $55 and how well does it perform? So the other accessories that you get with it, you do get this fan splitter. So you do get a single four pin PWM to a triple PWM splitter. So you can have one header, um, more than likely your CPU header, the Intel bracket, as well as the uh, universal Intel backplate supporting all the standard mainstream uh, sockets uh, types. So 11 XX and up, no problem. It does actually include some 20 XX standoffs. I don't know how many people are still running X99, X299 but you get standoffs for those if you are for some reason. And then you do get a different set of standoffs for 1200. Obviously I had the 1700 out because it was tested on our 1400K at 253 watts. Those are the standoffs for that. When I took the CPU off, I had very good spread of the thermal paste all the way to the edges of the CPU. So there was no concern about whether or not we were gonna have any hot spots or non uh, thermal paste covered areas of IHS giving us full heat dissipation. For the odd chance that you don't have a header available for your pump, it does have a three pin DC to a SATA power to provide power to your pump. That would just make it run full speed all the time. Radiator mounting screws for either you know, the top of the case or the side of the case. And then you get a tube of thermal paste, which is really big, but also really empty. This is everything that was in there. Um, the fans were pre-mounted, which I love. And then you get basic egg crate. So they're clearly saving money on the packaging. In terms of the fan specs, I have no way of validating this. I do not have a fancy $100,000 fan tester, but the fans uh, are the 2000 RPM, 120 by 25 mil fans. It says they're less than 27.7 dBA. I would say that the ear dyno says that's probably fairly accurate because they were pretty quiet even at 100% when they first turned on. Now I did have to up the percentage uh, to get 1800 RPM because these are a lower overall RPM fan than the other AAOs that I tested at 2200. So I had to bump it up to about just over 10 volts to get 1800 RPM, uh, which was about 81% on the motherboard header. So not that that matters to you, it's just what it took. Static pressure shows 2.87 millimeters H2O max. That's gonna be at 100% fan speed. So obviously these are, and 72.37 CFM, that would be in an open environment, obviously not with a radiator pushing resistance against it, or it pushing against the resistance of the radiator. With that said, let's talk about the temps. If we look at OCCT over 20 minute duration, so we can reach uh, normalization or equalization here, or steady state, I guess, uh, you can see, pfft, I mean, there's no difference. 
Like they are literally on top of each other. They even with obviously different fans and such, even the Montec has thicker fans at 28 millimeter fans. They reach equilibrium at the same time. They increase in temperature at the same rate. There's nothing, literally they're all on top of each other, right? If we take a look at the uh, core average temp, once again, all exactly the same. I mean, the, it looks like the nucleus is like slightly higher. This is about one degree warmer on the core average. Um, if we take a look at Cyberpunk 2077, which is a less of a um, load on the CPU, so it's more dynamic changing frequencies and such. You can see once again at the beginning, there's some spikes. That's when the, the game save is loading. CPU is under more load and then in the game, it does a lot less. The yellow line right here represents the thermal right. It performs just as good at, as AAOs that are three times the cost. Now, if we take a look at the uh, core average temp, same thing, really nice and tight, right across the board at about uh, 49C on average. That's, that's kind of nuts. You know, if we take a look at our averages of a bar graph here, you can see that the Montec Hyperflow Digital 360 has a package temp average uh, in OCCT at 76.9 with core average temp at 67.3. Or and then the thermal right 67.38 for the cores, and then the nucleus was 68.94 for the EK. And then the, when it comes to package temp, 76.9, 76.6, and 76.6. Actually, let me back up. We have to move in, into the hundreds column to actually separate those two between the thermal right and the EK, which is more than three times the cost. 76.66 versus 76.64. So I'm sorry, the thermal ride is 0.02C warmer in that test. So clearly it's worth spending $180 on an AIO versus $55. And I wanna correct myself on something. I said this was the cheapest AIO on Amazon. I, I found a cheaper thermal ride at $48. <laughs> there are triple packs of fans that cost twice as much as that alone. It's nuts. How, Phil and I were like, what the hell did they do? Did they rob a warehouse of radiators or something? Cause how the hell are they doing this? But let's take a look at a price chart. And what I did on this, pri this price chart was just kind of scroll through Amazon, put some popular brands in there. I didn't even do other brands like ID Cooling, which is not a known, a, an unknown brand. It's a lesser known brand, but it's not an unknown brand. I didn't put PC Cooling in there. I didn't do like the Tom Tops and the other like random Timu brand stuff that's in there. I just did recognizable brands. You can see right now at the top, we put the, the Trix Panorama SE 360. That's 280 bucks USD on Amazon as of October, 2025. Again, that makes sense. It's got a freaking like a flexible OLED panel in there that is curved, right? But so you you probably are getting about 60 bucks worth of AIO and you're getting about $210 worth of screen in that particular instance, right? Uh, the Lee and Lee Hydra Shift 2 360TL, that's $231.99. Now that does have a screen on there as well. So let's be fair, this doesn't have a screen or anything, but I'm just showing you how much extra you can spend on an AIO and you're not spending any more on cooling performance because our line charts have already shown like 360s are going to basically perform the same. Oh, I need to point out that $48 cooler by Thermalright has 1,550 RPM max fans. So it would be at a slight disadvantage in our test because we run it at 1,800 RPM. So just need to point that out there, but I don't think between 1,550 and 1,800, we would see a huge difference in performance. Probably a couple of degrees though, to be honest. Anyway, moving on, the Corsair IQ Link Titan 360 RX 220. So the Nucleus 360 Black ARGB, which we talked about is $179.99. The NZXT Kraken Plus 360 at 179 also. The Montec Hyperflow Digital 360 at 120, which we talked about. The Corsair Nautilus 360 RS at 109.99. That's where you really start getting into the more budget stuff from Corsair. The Arctic Freezer 3 Pro 360 ARGB at 98.99. That's the only cooler on here that might actually be able to pull quite ahead of these other guys. And that's because the Arctic Freezers, Freezer 3s are 38 millimeter thick radiators with thick fans as well. So it has a, a thermal capacity increase over the other 25 mil or, or excuse me, the 25 mil fans and 30 mil thick rads. It's a thicker rad with a beefier, thicker fan. So that is definitely going to play into, um, you know, you start to get a little more of what you paid for. But double the price of performance difference? No, not really. Anyway, moving on, the Thermalrite Frozen Note 360 at 55.39, and then the Thermalrite Octic, or Aqua Elite 360 RGB is 48.90. Here's the moral of the story, and I think a lot of you know this already. When it comes to AIOs, most of what you're paying for is what goes 
on top of the whole setup to make it more exciting, whether it be in this instance here, it's gonna be an infinity mirror or an LCD screen, or you know, you got your ARGB fans. Most of it, I wouldn't call it quote unquote gimmicky. Some of it definitely is gimmicky that you can find out there in these AIOs I've mentioned, but I wouldn't say it's easy to justify those price points. I'd personally rather spend a lot less and just put a Raspberry Pi sensor panel in my computer and save money. Now, if, you're, if you've got the budget to buy the expensive AIOs, you're not gonna care anyway. But the only other thing, like I said, that makes these different, it's going to be the longevity of them and also their warranty support. Because if it's 55 bucks, that's great, but if it's known to spring leaks or crack and start to hurt your components, that would obviously be a problem. But all you gotta do is head to Amazon, go to the thermal right, um, Frozen Note 360, and then click on the verified purchaser reviews, and you'll find that it's it's like 4.7 stars out of five. It is a very well-respected cooler. I'm glad I finally took it out of the box. We only have a handful of data. We just started collecting 360 AIO tests, but so far they are all landing so consistently on top of each other that really you're just paying for a lot of the extra nice to haves. If performance is all you care about, you don't need anything more than this, because this shows all you need to spend is 55 bucks to get the same performance as a $300 AIO, but you're not gonna get the extra bells and whistles. And obviously as consumers, that's where you have to decide what you're willing to spend on that. All right, guys, I have no idea how thermal has gone from 65 bucks last year to 55 bucks this year with all the crap going on with pricing and tariffs and stuff. I don't know how the hell that's happened, but there you go. It makes all the other brands look really sleazy with these whole price increases because tariffs, How'd Thermal Right come down 20%?